All right, I got a measuring tape. <laughs> 14, that's way too big, by nine, also way too big. Hey everyone, I'm Dave, and today we're making the world's best cinnamon rolls. Well, at least according to Google. We're gonna look up, like always, the world's best recipe on Google when it comes to cinnamon rolls. We're gonna try to cook it and see if it really is top tier. All right, so let's go take a look. World's best cinnamon roll breakfast. <laughs> or I mean recipe, not breakfast. <laughs> I said breakfast because I haven't eaten breakfast yet. And so like, let's get to it. Although I feel like this is gonna be a multi-hour process. So I don't think breakfast is coming anytime soon. It looks like the number one recipe is from a website called Ambitious Kitchen. All right, so I guess we should start off with the ingredients or just get into it. I don't know. Do you guys like it when I read off the ingredients? It seems like a lot of work. I could just put a list below and then, you know, if you wanna follow along, go get the ingredients. I'll go through it quick, but maybe next time I won't. Milk, eggs, you need milk and eggs. You need brown sugar, light or dark. I think I'm gonna do dark because it recommends dark. Butter and cream cheese, this is disgusting Walmart cream cheese, so it might ruin the whole recipe, but they were out of Philadelphia. Salt, which, you know, people hate Morton's, but I use it. Eggs, two of them. Active dry yeast. Bread flour, which must be different than normal flour since it was specified, but I'm not really sure what the difference might be. Cinnamon, powdered sugar, and normal sugar. I think that's all you need to make the world's best cinnamon rolls. Anyways, let's get started. First, you need a mixer bowl. It doesn't need to be a KitchenAid, but that's what I have. So that's, you know, not sponsored, but willing. Um, so you take your mixer and you put a cup of milk in it that's warm. And the, the recipe, let me read it, hold on. It says it needs to be 110 degrees. It says heat your milk to 110 degrees like bath water. That seems like a really hot bath, I'll be honest. Like I've been in a hot tub and usually like 104 degrees makes me sweat. So 110 degrees seems like a very hot bath, but I don't know. Also, who's taking a bath in milk? We need how much, how much milk? Three quarters of a cup. So we're gonna measure out three quarters of a cup here. And I don't know what kind of fancy nonsense milk this is. Fair life, reduced fat, lactose free. Okay, so the recipe says, I've got my mixer ready now. The recipe says to get the milk warm like bath water by putting it in the microwave for 40 seconds. So we'll do that. Okay, so the milk is done and it's pretty hot. So we're gonna pour it into this bowl here. Next step is to put it in here in the little mixer thingy. And I don't know if this is the right tool. What we do is now that we've got the milk warm, we add the yeast and this is active dry yeast. I don't know how to open this. It's some sort of science project here. We'll do it this way. There we go. Always look really weird, like little bugs or something, but we need how much? Two and a quarter teaspoons of this. So one teaspoon, two teaspoons and a quarter teaspoon of active dry yeast sits in the milk. And then we need to add a whole bunch of other stuff really quick, I guess. Sugar, egg, egg yolk, and melted butter. Sugar, egg, egg yolk, and melted butter. Okay. But first we need to grab a quarter cup of sugar and add it in there. And then we'll do an egg. And like I said, it's an egg and an egg yolk. So the full egg we'll do first, boom. And then the egg yolk we'll do next. And I like to use, I like to use a spoon where I kind of crack it into the spoon. And then because I'm on camera, probably fail miserably. Oh my gosh. Yep, totally failed miserably. <laughs> I got a shell in there. I got the yolk in there. This is what we call failing, but that's okay. Let me get the shell out first. Can you get it out? Don't worry, I washed my hands a couple weeks ago. <laughs> just kidding. All right, let's take one of these yolks out. A spoon usually works pretty well. You just kind of put it on there, shake it a little, like Beetlejuice, shake, shake, shake. Center. There you go, you got your yolk removed. That's going in the trash, I guess. Oh, I just messed that up. <laughs> I just messed that whole thing up. Dang it. Okay, so it calls for an egg and an egg yolk. And so I've got now a egg with an extra egg white. So that part that I just destroyed, I don't know if you saw that, I just put it on here, was the part I need. So I don't know, both these eggs are <laughs> wasted now. I'm gonna start over, stand by, let me wash my hands. All right, so this is always a good time to remind you that I am not a professional cook. I am just someone who cooks as a hobby and uh, yeah, so you'll see me make mistakes, but I feel like we all make mistakes and it's okay. Okay, hold on. All right, we're doing this right. We put the egg in there. Now we're trying to just get the yolk from this egg because the yolk is the yellow part. That would have been a pretty big flop if I accidentally did it the other way. So here we go. Two egg yolks, 
We're good, this is all excess. And that's gonna go with the yeast and the sugar into the mixer. Beautiful. So after that little hiccup, we're gonna add a quarter cup of melted butter. So we're gonna cut out a quarter cup here, like so, quarter cup. And we'll put that in here and we're gonna melt it. So that's basically four tablespoons of butter, right? Am I mathing right? Quarter cup is four tablespoons. All right, so I've got my melted butter here and I think I'm gonna switch. I have this like dough hook thinking that's what I should use on the mixer. But I think for this step, we just need to mix it. So I'm gonna use this, I don't know what it's called, but not dough hook. Add the butter in there. And our next step is to mix it like so. All right, that looks like it's pretty well mixed up. The next thing we're gonna do is add the bread flour, which is three cups worth. Actually, is that right? Is it three or four cups? Yeah, three cups of bread flour are gonna go in next. Oop. Well, you know, that was expected, right? <laughs> Making a huge mess again. Not a professional cook. Making what we think is the world's best recipe according to Google. One cup, two cup, and three cups of bread flour. I've never made cinnamon rolls from scratch before. So this will be, I mean, I've done the ones, the Pillsbury, where you just take them out of the can. Those are okay, I don't really love them. And how much salt? Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. So I need like, where's my half? One half teaspoon and a quarter teaspoon. There we go. And it actually says to mix it with a wooden spoon, which, I mean, how folksy. I don't know if I have a wooden spoon though. I'm gonna have to investigate that. You know, I was gonna clean up and throw out this flour, but I might need it in a second to work on this dough. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jump the gun and throw it out just yet. So it says I'm supposed to mix this with a wooden spoon, which I don't own. So I'm gonna use a metal spoon and hopefully that doesn't drastically alter the, the flavor profile of these cinnamon rolls. So we're just gonna mix it up real quick until a dough for, starts to form. It's already starting to form, so that's a good thing. Oh, wow, it's getting hard. Get off my spoon. So there you see it. Kind of sticking to the spoon. Let me see what's next. Okay, actually now it says to place it back on the mixer and knead it for eight minutes. So I think we've got it far enough to begin the kneading process. Eight minutes, that's a long time, jeez. Okay, put it on there. Put this little dough hook thingy on there. I think that's what you use to knead it, maybe. Lock it down. Uh-oh. Get locked down, you thing. Uh-oh, this might be broken. You know what? Huh, I don't know what's wrong with this. Doesn't seem to be working. Maybe the hook is too big? Can we use this instead? This might not work very well, but we're gonna have to try this because I think this is too big. How long it is, like it's for the wrong mixer. Let's see if this one gives me the same issues. No, that one works fine. All right, we'll do it that way and hope it works. All right, I mean, this is kind of loud, so we're not gonna talk over it the whole time, but we're gonna let that knead for eight minutes, and then we're going to put it in a well-oiled bowl. So let me get a well-oiled bowl ready. Okay, so we mixed for six minutes. We're supposed to mix for eight, but my mixer was getting very hot to the touch and it was struggling to do anything, so I decided to stop so I wouldn't break it but this seems like pretty well mixed. It says we're supposed to take this, it's supposed to be slightly sticky, which it is. We're supposed to form a ball, and that looks like a ball, and plop it into a bowl. Now this bowl is well oiled, and by doing, the way I did that is I just sprayed olive oil. I don't know if that's what it meant, but I sprayed olive oil on the bowl. There's what it looks like, bowl full of dough. I mean, the dough's pretty tough. I felt like it should be more loose, but it's not. I've never done this before, so I don't know if we're on the right track, but this is the part that it gets weird. It says cover with plastic wrap and then cover with a warm towel. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm supposed to go to my dryer and dry a towel? I don't know. Could mean like a wet towel, like with wet water. I'm just, maybe I'll just put a towel on top and see. I think that's what I'll do. I don't wanna put water on top unless that's what I'm supposed to do, and I don't know. So I'm just gonna put a towel on top like that, okay? And I'm gonna set it on my counter. And it says to leave it like that so it can rise for an hour to an hour and a half, or till it doubles in size. So we'll be back in like an hour, and we'll keep going. And we're back. Hello, guys. Ta-da! Our dough has doubled in size, I think. About, I mean, I didn't measure it. And I feel like I might need to measure it pretty soon based on this next step in the recipe. But here we are, we're back. We're continuing to make the world's best baked potato. No, that's not right. Cinnamon rolls, there we go. So what we're gonna do is we're going to plop the ball of dough onto this counter. Ooh, give it a little spank. And it, the next step is that we need to, I feel like we need a little more flour. 
roll this out into a rectangle, but it's like a very specifically sized rectangle. 14 by nine. I mean, 14 by nine. I need to get a measuring tape because <laughs> I don't know. Here, let's get a little more flour under there. 14 by nine inch rectangle. So that's like more this way. I'm not, okay, I'm not a pastry chef to the point where I can like intentionally roll out a rectangle. If you guys know the trick, let me know, but this is not something I've ever done before. But we're gonna try it. 14 by six. I am, wait, it's 14 by six or 14 by, 14 by nine. Hold on, I'm gonna get a measuring tape. All right, I got a measuring tape. <laughs> 14, that's way too big, by nine, also way too big. All right, so let's like, let's reshape it a little bit. Maybe it needs to be less thin. I don't know, how's that? Still too big, 14, perfect by nine. All right, so this is what we need as far as size goes. How am I gonna actually make that consistent? I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what to do next. Let me do this. I don't know. Here, let's try it this way so we can like, I'm a little nervous about this. I've never done this before. Now it seems like it's not working at all. Fourteen by nine. That's pretty darn close. 14 by 10. We're gonna call that a success, guys. Low bar, but that's 14 by nine and a half, 14 by 10. Bread softened butter over dough. I have that over here. How much butter? Let's see. Quarter cup, so perfect. This is a quarter cup. Leave a quarter inch margin on the far right side of the dough. Ugh, I want this softer. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it's okay. Quarter inch margin on the far right side. So this is weird. I'm nervous because I've just never done this before. Quarter inch is like basically that little fold I've got there by accident. There you go. And then the rest will just, these aren't gonna be perfect guys. They might be perfect if you make them, but we're talking world's best recipes here, which means random guy who's never done it before tries a recipe he finds on the internet to varying levels of success. But I don't really think the look of them is gonna affect the taste of them. So I think we could be okay. So we're spreading the butter out and leaving a little bit at the right hand side. And here's what I'll say. If I can do this successfully, then anyone watching can because I am far from pro. This is my first try. Okay, I mean, it looks interesting. Make sure you watch till the end though. Don't go bailing on me. Don't give up on me. This could be good. Okay, so in a small bowl, mix together brown sugar and cinnamon. Here's a small bowl, brown sugar and cinnamon. Two thirds cup of brown sugar, one and a half tablespoons of cinnamon. Okay, so first, wait, is it packed brown sugar? It doesn't say packed. So I guess it's not packed. All right, so let's get two thirds cup. This is a one third cup measuring device. So we'll just fill it twice. Fill the device up twice. One, two, there's two thirds cups. And then one and a half tablespoons of cinnamon. So we'll just do this. This is a full tablespoon here. Gosh, hopefully I don't run out. I'm almost out. One, uh, oh, pff. oops. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm special. One and a half. Okay, we did it. We're out of cinnamon though. Then we want to stir these two things up as I spill the cinnamon on the ground. Ugh, fail. Stir this up. Mix the cinnamon and the brown sugar. And let me see what the next step is while I do. I wish I'd use the, I'm gonna recommend using a slightly bigger bowl because this is like just small enough so that I'm afraid I'm gonna spill it. Actually, it's easier to do with my hands. Maybe I'll do it that way. So I just want the cinnamon and the sugar to get all mixed in because this is gonna go on top of this dough and it's gonna provide the flavor. So now that we've got it mixed, we're just gonna use our hands to sprinkle it on the dough. Hey, this is shaping up. This is starting to look sort of like a cinnamon roll or what I would imagine a cinnamon roll to look like before it's made. I love Cinnabon. Do you guys like Cinnabon? I mean, you feel horrible after you eat it, but am I supposed to use all this? This seems like a lot. All right, we're just doing it. We're just doing the whole thing. Spread it out a little. And it says to use your hands to like, rub it into the butter. So I'm, I mean, I'm taking that as like, push it down. Push it down to get it all nice and stuck. Spank it a little, give it a little spankaroo. Yeah, okay, cool. That looks pretty good actually. Okay, so it says we need to roll it. And it says to start on the nine inch side, which is the shorter side and just start rolling it. So can you see that? Yeah, I think the camera's pointed at it. 
So I'm rolling it like I would roll a sleeping bag, I guess, nice and tight. Do I need to put my knee on it? When I roll a sleeping bag, I put my knee on it. Close-up camera died, so we're switching to the other one. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. Uh-oh, is it supposed to come off at the end like that? Seam side down, it said, okay. Then it says, you'll need to cut off about an inch on the ends of the dough as they won't be full of cinnamon sugar. Okay, it says to use a serrated knife. This is a serrated bread knife, so cut off an inch here, cut off an inch here. There we go. Hey, you know what? This honestly is looking like a cinnamon roll. Cut into one inch sections with a serrated knife. You should get nine large pieces. One inch. Let's just get the idea of what a one inch is. Yeah, okay. I swear you need a tape measure to do this recipe. Okay, so cut number one. Cut number two. Cut number three. I'm trying to make them all the same. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I ended up with ten rolls. It says I should get nine, but I ended up with ten, probably because mine was like ten inches, not nine inches. It says to put it into a greased nine by nine inch baking pan. So here's my nine by nine baking pan. I'm just gonna grease it real quick. You could also probably use butter to grease it, but I'm using the pan. And then we just put them in here, like so. One, two, three. I don't think 10 is going to fit. Four, five, six, maybe it will. Seven, eight, nine. I don't think I'm going to fit 10. 10. Maybe I'll just squish it on the edge. Should I? No, I won't. Okay, so there you go. How's that look? It looks pretty good. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. I get proud of weird things, but anyways, I'm proud of, proud of that. Oh man, I was getting excited about eating it. It says I need to let it rise again. So I'm going to spread it out a little more so it can rise safely. So cover with plastic wrap again. I'm so impatient. I hate waiting. Cover with plastic wrap again. Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and wait another 30 minutes. Brutal. Well, I guess that gives me time to clean. All right, I'll be back. Let me clean up. So I've cleaned up a little bit. It's nice. Now we're going to work on the frosting. For the frosting, the cinnamon rolls are still rising over there. For the frosting, the first thing we need is three quarter cups of powdered sugar, which I have right here. And I've got my three quarter cup measure. Gonna measure that out and make a big mess right after I cleaned. It's exhausting. We've got our three quarter cups of powdered sugar in there. We now want to add four ounces of cream cheese, which I've got right here. I did actually go get the good cream cheese, Philadelphia. Yeah. So put that in there with it. And then on top of that, we're gonna do butter, softened butter. I might've cheated and put it in the microwave. It's uh, three tablespoons. I couldn't remember. Hold on, let me get it in there. Three tablespoons of butter. And then the last thing is some vanilla extract. It is a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Let me get a teaspoon measure. And I did bring back out my mixer. Half a teaspoon, oh boy. I went a little over. I won't pour it all in. And then we're gonna put it in our mixer again. And we'll mix that up until it turns into frosting. Ah! Okay, don't do it max because it flies everywhere. Dang it. Okay, that's fine. Now, there we go. That's better. And just clean up this powdered sugar I just got everywhere. You could obviously do this by hand. Okay, let me turn this up now that it's started off. Okay, so that looks pretty much good. Does it look fluffy? It looks fluffy. Pure sugar. <laughs> Actually, that's really good, nice. Now this is gonna go on the cinnamon, cinnamon, <laughs> cinnamon rolls after they're done cooking. So you could make this while they're cooking, you could make this while they're rising. It's really up to you. I'm gonna put it in the fridge, put it in a little bowl and put it in a fridge, in the fridge, until we're closer to taking out the cinnamon rolls from the oven, which they're not even in yet, so we got time. But my kids would like to eat this frosting. I would leave it in this bowl until they were done, but, but I wanna refrigerate it and my fridge is super full. And I don't think I could fit this big bowl in there. Okay guys, so we're back. It has been 35 minutes and the cinnamon rolls did grow a little, but not a ton. Let's see what our next step is. Okay, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. I guess I should have told you that earlier, <laughs> but I, you know, the oven needs to be preheated to 350 degrees. Mine takes like five minutes. So go ahead and do that now. Remove plastic wrap and towel, I already did that. And bake cinnamon rolls for 20 to 25 minutes until slightly golden brown, golden brown. So put them in there. I'll set the timer, hold on. All right, so my timer's on. I did 22 minutes, we'll check it at 22. Here's the key. It says you wanna underbake them a little so they stay soft in the middle. This is why we want them just slightly golden brown. Allow them to cool for five to 10 minutes and then frost. So we're almost done guys, 25 minutes and we're gonna be digging in to what potentially will be the world's greatest cinnamon rolls. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm back. I'm gonna pull the cinnamon rolls out of the oven, hoping that they're golden brown, we'll see. Okay, so. 
We're gonna pull them out because they're just slightly golden brown. I think we're ready. I hope, I hope, I hope. There we go. Oof. Okay, cinnamon rolls, world's best. Let's go. Now it says we're supposed to wait. Anna, my daughter's here waiting for these to be done. Says we're supposed to wait five minutes for them to cool. So hard to wait. They seem done. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. They're feeling kind of cool. It's been in plenty of minutes, right? So let's add the frosting here. Blop. Ploppity plop. Uh, this doesn't seem to be working that well. Um, I'm just gonna kind of put it all over and then I'll take a knife and I'll spread it with a knife, like a butter knife. There we go. Spread it out with the knife. Get these nice and frosty. Stay frosty, buns. Stay frosty. We're gonna pull one of these out. Me and Anna are gonna test it and see if it's really... Anna doesn't wanna be on camera though, which is fine. Oh, it's so hot. Okay, let's try this. You know, we'll just split one. Are you coming over here? There's a piece for you. Let me get myself before it gets hot. Did you try it? Maybe. Did it burn your mouth? Mm -mm. Let me try it. It tastes normal. Ow. It tastes normal? Like versus what? Uh, you know when we went to like Ikea? Mm -hmm. It tastes like those. Hmm. It's better than the ones in a can though. You know the ones in a can? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's better than those? I do. These are delicious. They taste like Cinnabon. They taste just like Cinnabon to me. Elijah's trying them now. Anna, what do you give them out of a 10? Food. She, she gave him a food. Elijah, what do you give him out of a 10? Eight. An eight, okay. One. What's that? Can I have one? He wants one, guys. That's a good sign. He wants a whole one. All right, I would say these are the best Cinnabons. I mean, to me, they taste just like a Cinnabon, which is my favorite Cinnabon. So these are basically homemade Cinnabons, which is a win to me. Definitely make these. They're a big project, though, so maybe you could do some of it overnight because it's already 11 o'clock and we're finally having breakfast. And I started at 7.30. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time.